Jesus shall take the highest honor. Jesus shall take the highest praise. Let all of us join heaven in exalting the name which is above all other names. Let's bow the knee in humble adoration. For at his name every knee shall bow. Let every tongue confess he is Christ, God's only Son. Sovereign Lord, we give you glory now. For all honor and blessing and power belongs to you. Belongs to you. All honor and blessing and power belongs to you. Belongs to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God. Jesus shall take the highest honor. Jesus shall take the highest praise, honor, join him in exalting. The name above our names, let by the mean humble adoration, humble adoration. Good morning everyone and good morning to everyone out there on live stream. I uh, hope you're able to join us. We hope the technical bits are working. Hello, give us a wave if you're there. Um, special welcome this morning to our, our honoured guest, Harold's mum, all the way from Worcestershire, who's joining us. Um, and uh, she's staying with the court night, so hang up. So, so pray for her that she manages to get fed, okay? Uh, Usual stuff, please fill in a trap and trace guard. Please use hand sanitizer. Um, thank you for wearing masks. If you're not wearing a mask, if you don't have a, a, a medical reason for not wearing us, please do wear a mask, okay? Uh, we're asked to. Um, you can find the service order in the bits of paper, white and yellow if you're here, and you'll find the service order online if you're watching us online. If you're here, um, the best we can offer you is to mumble behind your masks if you're online. Uh, and you're told you can annoy the neighbours by singing as loud as you like, okay? Um, last thing to say, I think, is that there's no collection pit passed around. If you want to make an offering, please stick it in the bucket at the back of the church and be brought forward at the end of song number six. It's a joy to be able to worship together, uh, and uh, we should never under underestimate the privilege. We're going to start with a Bible sentence, and I'm going to hand over to Richard who is going to lead us through some prayer and praise. St. Paul said there's one body and one spirit, just as there is one hope to which God has called you. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of mankind. Our theme today is worship together. Uh, I'm probably be talking about that a bit later, but um, now Richard's going to talk, lead us in some prayer and praise and worship together. 
Thank you, Dave. And let me echo that warm welcome to our time of worship this afternoon, whether you are here in this building with us or watching out on the live stream. And if you are watching on the live stream, uh, as Dave just said, do use these, these few short moments to find our order of service on the church website. And for our young worshippers, there's an activity sheet with a maze, a Bible verse to colour in, and, and the, the ever faithful word search there. You'll find that too on our website. I say these short moments. Um, with Robert talking to us later about worship and fellowship, I feel like there's, there's not a lot to say now that wouldn't maybe steal from his sermon, or doesn't go without saying in our time of worship. I think we just get stuck in and sing three songs that are songs of faith, songs of praise, songs that get our hearts and minds in the right place for why we want to worship. We're going to sing of the strength that rises up in us. An all-sufficient grace freely given for us. And hopefully then we'll be able to bless to our souls the, these words that we sing. Do as Dave says, please mumble along behind masks if you're in this building. Sing as loudly as you like if you're out on the live stream. Let's have strength rise up in us as we sing.
we've learned this of you that raised from death to life you've rescued our world in our dark and troubled times in the darkness of the last 18 months you've been there rescuing our world you're a God of love a God of sacrifice and you've enabled us even in the troubles to come here physically and virtually on the live stream, to learn more of you and to be able to say, today I know this is our God. This is my God. So help us to be strengthened and encouraged by the fellowship together, by the worship together. However, we're thinking on these words, thinking on these songs, listening to Robert's sermon later. Help us to be able to go outside and say, today I know you more, God. And I can say, here in this place I learned, this is our God. We ask this, we, we offer this, this thankful praise in your name, in your son's name, in the sacrifice's name. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Just as there is one hope to which God has called you, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all humanity. Let's join together and let's join our prayer of preparation together. So we pray. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to make us ready to meet with you. Send your Holy Spirit on us now, we pray, that we may hear your word, share in your communion, receive your grace, and be renewed in your love. Amen. Jesus told us to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, to love our neighbours as ourselves. If we've not managed that, let's join together in the confession and ask for his forgiveness. So we pray. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
We confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. St. John said God's love for us was revealed when God sent his only Son into the world so that we could have life through him. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon us and set us free from all our sins. Pardon us and deliver us and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you so many good things beyond our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can hope for. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. I was going to send the kids up now. We've got, some, uh, we've got a DVD for the kids. So... Um, Carol, send them all out to this exciting DVD. Yes, we've got uh, the next episode of our Friends and Heroes DVD. Uh, and Ruth is going to be helping me today, and uh, Gigi as well. And so, first of all, for the babies, there are some toys in the cafe. Uh, and then for Sunday Club, then if you go out through the door at the back and along the corridor and into the Christchurch room and there's some hand gel and sit socially distanced. YPF, it's your choice. You can either come and watch the DVD or stay here, up to you. And as we go out, we'll sing our theme song. Uh, I think we've got to about number five. I am a new creation. Uh, so uh, we'll see you a bit later.
Tolu is going to come to read to us now. And apologies, um, some dozy old vicar left a third reading of the of the hymn sheet, okay? Uh, and that's an important one, so listen very carefully to the Acts reading. Tolu, all yours. Good morning, church. Our first reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 2. Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. This is on our yellow sheet. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two have been built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. The second reading from First Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 27 to 30. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? <clears throat> and our third reading is from the Acts of Apostles. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. <clears throat> they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Verse 47, the last verse. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who have been saved. Mm -hmm. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, God. Good afternoon, St. John's, and for those who are watching online. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, reading from verse 20 to 23. Hear the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. 
I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, all of us. Amen. In the last service, I promised that I wouldn't say anything about football. Um, football, that small match that's happening this evening. Uh, I'm not one of the greatest fans of uh, football generally, but um, even on an occasion like this, I, I uh, step up and enjoy uh, a little bit of football. But I don't want to say too much about it. I just want to um, get a, a very small element of this. This evening, um, people in Italy and probably throughout the world and in this country certainly will all be together in some way. Now, I'm obviously generalizing because many, I'm sure there are many people like me who couldn't care less about a football match. Amen. Uh, there you go, I told you. Okay. But for those who are interested in football, everybody will be focused on this one thing. It's football match and they will be um, for those in Wembley, in one place, and for ever, most other people, in for that one place in front of a television screen, um, and others maybe on their laptops and so on, focused in one mind to watch this match. Um, I don't know what they say about, um, is it the, the, the first time England has got the final since 1966, is that correct? I hope I'm yes. saying that. There you go. So it's as old as... I could say I remember it, but I couldn't because I was born about that time. Anyway, so um, they will be in one place, one mind, focused on this match. And I thought, wow, this is a very interesting illustration of, of, <laughs> of the church, or should be an illustration of the church, being um, in one place and of one mind. And the reading in Acts, which um, I apologize to Dave, it wasn't his fault, I gave him the reading a bit late. The reading in Acts paints that picture. Um, and actually all the other readings give us um, little images of what the unity of the believers should be like, or in Acts as it was in the early church. They were in one place, one mind, in prayer, in praise, in worship, glorifying God. They were together, basically. Um, and I think this is kind of what we are um, looking at today. Now, in St. John's, for those, uh, many people have joined us over the last year and a half. And we thank God for you. You are most welcome. We love you. And you are part of us as a family. But for those who were not here before the pandemic, um, we, the church has always um, had um, practice of meeting together and eating together. Yes, do I, anybody agree with me? Yes, absolutely. I miss that. I miss, you know, coming together to eat together. It's in those moments, of course, the eating together is my favorite, but the moments where we sit at a table, there's a mad rush for the door. And, you know, for those who are standing at the door, it's more case, good night, it's about to see you later. But you know, it shouldn't really be like that. I know that mo many of us are probably busy and we have to either go to work or maybe go home and prepare food and so on. So there's so many things you may be doing. But I think it's important that we have um, the time of fellowship where we actually just talk to one another. Just say hello. My, my name is Robert. What's your name? Wh where do you come from? That sort of stuff. Just to have fellowship with one another. But we are good at it at St. John's. We have tried. We have tried very hard. And it's something for us to think about um, after this lockdown is lifted. Now, in, in Acts chapter 2, in the, in the passage that um, Tolu just read very well, in Acts chapter 2, um, it says, The believers um, were de devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Key words that I want us to just briefly have a look at. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Of course, the apostles were teaching what Jesus had commanded them to teach. 
and the apostles were teaching what Jesus had commanded all believers to obey. Now, what are those things that Jesus commanded us to obey? Well, um, at the end of, um, I think it's the Gospel of Luke, Jesus um, gives his um, uh, commands, and he gives his um, final words to his disciples, and he says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And then in verse 20 he says, And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you to do. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Teaching them, verse 20, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Very interesting. Jesus commanded his disciples to do various things. There were certain times he would say, do this. This is what you need to do. There were times he would say things that we needed to do. That, it, that was part of our journey as his followers. And there are several of them. But I just picked a few. Jesus said, love one another. Do we love one another here? Yes or no? Okay, one person said yes. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he loves for the rest of us. I don't know. Do, do we love one another? Yes. yes, yes. Okay, if, if you're saying yes, be sure about that because I'll test you. Okay. That is something we need to do. To love one another. It's important. Um, when, um, in March last year, when um, I, I was knocked out by this um, virus, um, my, the whole family, we all had to isolate, you know, we couldn't go out and so on. And yet, there were people who rang, Dave, you know, rang and Carol and everybody else who, who got in touch just to find out how we were. And there were people who decided to cook food and bring home. Now, I'm not saying that they should have done that or anything or that we should do that. But I think they showed a lot of love for me and for my family. And that challenged me too, because, you know, how do I show love for other people as well? It inspired me to do something, at least I, you know, go try to go to the food bank once uh, every so often and, you know, give some food there. But I think there was an expression of love that was shown by those who cared about us. They would ring, they would find out how we were and so on. We need to love one another. Because if we don't love one another, how different are we from the rest of the world? How different are we from others who meet for other purposes? Love one another, brothers and sisters. Love. And this was a, a very important point that Jesus made. What else does he say we should obey? Ah. Pray for your enemies. Anybody do that regularly? Yeah. One, two, three. And it's half-hearted kind of... Do we pray for our enemies? Okay, yes. It's a kind of a weak yes. Do we really pray for our enemies? I mean, when I say pray for your enemies, the, the person who really gets on your nerves, you know, they, they grind you in a way and... I pray for Boris Johnson. Pray for that? Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I Does that count? I think we'll delete that. Uh, some, I don't know. We can't delete it. Boris Johnson, we do love you and we pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pray for, for your enemies. That's difficult. That is very, very difficult. Please, I'm not saying it's easy. It's very difficult. But from my own experience, it is very healing. It's healing. Because your enemy may not know that they are your enemy. But when you put them in God's hands, you ask the Lord to watch over them. To forgive them if there is anything to forgive. To forgive you and your attitude toward them. In the Lord's Prayer we say, forgive my sins as I forgive others their sins. Pray for your enemies. Very, very useful. Difficult to do. But try it and see. But Jesus commands us to do that. Repent. Turn around. Those were the first words he started off with. Repent. John started that. John the Baptist. Repent. For the kingdom of God is here. Repent. Repent. Turn around. Change your way. Whatever it is that you are doing. Whatever that thing that separates you from God. Turn around from it. Walk away from it. 
Jesus said, believe that Jesus is in the Father. He says, I am in the Father. Believe that. Believe I am in the Father. And the Father is in me. Believe in Him. The one most important thing for us to do. Take up your cross and follow me. We did, this, we did that a couple of weeks ago. Take up your cross. Do the thing that is most difficult for you to do. And follow Jesus. For some of us, it might just be the case that you need to tell the people you either work with or the people who know you that you are a Christian. Oh, tell them you are a Christian and let them laugh because they probably will laugh at you. Or they probably think you don't quite, you know, the lift doesn't quite go to the top and that kind of thing. You're crazy kind of thing. Tell them, take up your cross, carry your banner of Christ before all who see and know you. Go and make disciples. Now you may not be an evangelist, you may not be called to, make, to be an evangelist, but your testimony, the testimony of God in your life, how God has changed your life, that testimony may be very important for someone else, that they hear it and they too may hear about God's love through His Son. It might actually bring healing to their lives. It's not, it, don't try and, and, and be clever in how you express what God has done for you. Be honest. This is what God has done for me. I thank the Lord for this. This is what God is doing for me. I thank the Lord for what He's doing for me. Amen? But I think the ultimate command that Jesus gives us that we need to obey is love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. Be wrapped up in love for God. Love Him not just in the exciting moments of singing when Richard stands in front and sings with us and you raise your hand and that sort of thing. But love God even when you go home to your homes. Love God in your family. Love God with your family. The strength of your family. Love God in your office or school, wherever you work, whatever you do. Love Him there. And I'm not saying try and show everybody that you, you're such a wonderful Christian. No. Love the Lord your God with all that you are. For this, Jesus says, is what is the greatest command. Love Him with all your strength, with all your being, your intellect, your creativity, in everything that you are. And then the other part of that commandment. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The world has got into a place where sometimes we couldn't care less about those who are around us. We just couldn't care less because I need to mind my own business. And that's what, where the world has kind of put us. You know, our neighbor may be somebody who lives just next to you, but it could be somebody several thousand miles away when you give and you, you support and whatever you may do to help in their needs. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. It probably means you need to start loving yourself too. There you go. All right, let me go rush through the others and we'll see how we can do this. Okay, the second um, element, theme, that the early church um, had and did was fellowship and praise. It says when we meet together in fellowship, we should join in together in the praise and the worship. This is our language as we communicate with one another. Fellowship and praise. That's why we sing. That's why it's probably been very difficult for many of us through this pandemic and the lockdown. Because we've not been able to sing as we normally do. But we join in to sing together, to worship God in the one place, together. In Ephesians, Paul says, Do not get drunk on wine. I'm not saying you don't have to drink. For those who drink, that's your business. But don't get drunk on it, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to God, the Father, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Speak to one another in the fellowship of praise. Praising God. God is good. God is great. These things that we say. God is good. He is good. God is good. God is, is faithful. He is faithful. These are true things that we, we probably know. God, God is, is, is loving, He's gentle. God leads us, He's always with us. These are the things we share with one another and we build up one another. 
with these words. Our language to one another should be full of thanksgiving to God in praise and worship. I don't know if some of you remember the um, London Community Gospel Choir that, uh, when they started, it's the song that they used to sing. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count them, name them. God has blessed me. I got new shoes today. And not today, but you know. I, I got, you know, God has blessed me. I was able to do this. God has blessed me with this thing. God has, Name the blessings and share with one another. Share. These are important things because they build all of us up together. If we don't share, we don't know. We don't, we don't have, we don't build up one another. Love God in fellowship and praise. This afternoon, I think the women's group are meeting after the service. That's an, an example of fellowship. They're going to have fellowship. I think, Sharon, are you there? Yes. Um, if you want to, um, Sharon is right back of there. If you want to be a part of the women's group, please speak to her. And we have uh, somebody who represents the men's group here. We need to have fellowship one with another. That's important. It builds us up. The early church met together to break bread. What we might say is communion or Eucharist. Together, we share the Eucharist. We come together a very important part of who we are. We meet together, or gather together, to share in the body and the blood of our Lord and our Savior. Together we pray together. Here at St. John's, we pray. In the morning, day, and night, we'll always pray. We start off with prayer. Um, it, on, uh, on Sundays in church, we pray. We intercede for many. We pray um, for um, our loved ones. We pray for uh, uh, many mission uh, organizations and so on. We have a prayer hotline. I think, what does this mean for the church? Well, it says in verse 47, And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Brothers and sisters, our fellowship and worship is not just for you. It is so that God's kingdom is built. That's his focus, that his kingdom is built so that as many people as possible will know about his son. People walk through that, those doors because they want to know about God, not because of the clothes you're wearing. And if we reflect that in fellowship, one with another, they will come, they will stay and be part of the fellowship. And we will be equipped to go out and tell others about Jesus' love. Amen. Amen. And Tolu is going to come and lead us in prayer now, briefly. Let us pray. Father Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the word of yours that has been shared with us this afternoon. We pray, Lord, that as a seed has been sown in us, it will germinate good fruit in Jesus' name. Father, we know we are sinners. And we come unto you this afternoon. We open our hearts unto you, Father God. And we pray in penitence that you forgive all our sins. We know we are not perfect. But if we look up unto you, Lord God, you are ready and able and willing to forgive our sins that we may be in a good place to look up unto you and be confident in asking for your blessing in our lives. We pray, Father, that as we go into this new week, that, Father, you will favor us, that in all that we do, your blessing will be with us. We pray, Father, that your glory in the new week will enshrine us and that your protection will not depart from us. Lord, we remember those who are sick. We particularly remember Anjum, Minta, Case, Mother, who is unwell. We also pray for Margaret, who is also unwell. 
for Tom, Millie's husband. We remember Benedict. We remember Marcia, who's having medical treatment. We also place in your hands, O oh God, Kate and Wills. Also June, Ivy, Mariella, and Louise. Father, we cannot forget but those who still suffer from the effect of this devilish coronavirus. We pray, Father, that for all these people and those that we know in our different minds, that you will touch them with your healing hands in Jesus' name. Lord God, we pray for the people of India. We pray for Nepal. So we pray also for Vietnam. We pray for the nation of Uganda and all other nations that are struggling at this moment with this pandemic. We pray for the people of Israel and Palestine. Lord God, we pray for your peace and an end to violence in those nations. We pray for an end, Father Lord, to street violence and knife crimes, even in our own city, London. We pray, Father, that you will lead our people, that you will touch their hearts, and your peace will abide in our midst. We give thanks for the progress of the work, the way mission and for God's provision for the teams as they walk and share your gospel. We also thank you, Father, for the life of uh, Carol's mom. We pray for longevity. We pray for good health. We thank you for the peace that she has. And we thank you that she has the knowledge of you and worships you. We pray that our stay amongst us at this time to be a blessing not just unto her, but also unto us. We give thanks for the work of Andrew and Lisa Peart, who are working with CMS in Bolivia. We also pray for safety for Andrew and Lisa in the midst of the COVID crisis and political unrest in Bolivia. We pray for their work with some of the pure, purest and most marginalized people in a very poor country. And we also pray, Father, for the work of the CMS throughout the world as they seek to train missionaries to serve and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Your word says to us, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. We pray, Lord God, that that which the Apostles has taught us may be a blessing unto us and that we may take them on board in our daily lives. Father, Lord, we pray for your miracles to continue to happen amongst us, that you continue to grant us the gift of healing, and that, Father, you raise teachers amongst us that will teach us your word that we may live our life our right. Father Lord, we pray for your guidance. Raise counselors amongst us that may help us as we lead our lives on a day to day, giving thanks and worship unto you. We pray, Lord God, that you will raise prophets amongst us that will tell us things from you. And we pray that as they speak unto us, they will speak the truth and your blessing will abound. Lord God, we pray, Father, for those that speak in tongues, that as they speak, you will give them and others the spirit to interpret that which they say, that the words that they speak may not go in vain. We glorify thy holy name, Father Lord, and we pray that as a church, we will continue to grow together. And your peace will continue to dwell amongst us. Your blessing will be with us. That as we worship you, Lord God, we will continue to receive your blessing. Your glory will continue to be amongst us, and your peace will be our portion. Thank you, Father Lord. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're talking about togetherness. The Bible says we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes the peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you all. As we share with one another, we're going to sing hymn number six. And this is Shine Jesus Shine. And uh, our offering will be brought up during the last chorus of this song. So you can mumble loudly behind your mask, snap your fingers and so on. Take your hand, bang, take it away, go for it. such a joy. Father, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for those who gave them, for those who give by bank standing orders. We thank you for all your gifts to us. We pray, Lord, that you'll use these gifts in your service and bless those who give in your service. Amen.
I've been handed an extra prayer request from Joyce, whose niece is in hospital with, I think, cysts in her lungs. So Lord, we offer you this prayer. We pray for this lady, whoever she is. We pray that you will bring her your healing in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll find our communion prayers on the yellow service sheets. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts and lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. In the same way, after supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise. We lift our voice to join the eternal Son of Heaven. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As Jesus taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Please come forward for communion through the centre aisle. Return to your seats in the side aisles. Um, that way we should manage to maintain social distancing. Nick and I will stand still. Uh, you need to come to us. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave you. And I will on your behalf drink his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Jesus died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith. With thanksgiving.
the mind of our Creator, who can speak of the wonders yet unseen, who can reach the heights of understanding, or sing the notes of wisdom and melody. Who has weighed the dust of every mountain? Who has walked the mysteries of the deep? Who has laid the earth on its foundations? And who commands the waves upon the sea? I stand in Some reason if you're there, Bev. 
Turn me up, please. God of all pilgrimage, you have led us into the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Oh, that's better, yes. Thanks. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I've got um, notices and birthdays and bands. And I haven't got the bands book. Can Robert or Carol go fetch the bands book, please? Thank you. Um, newsletters are uh, green, and you'll see that the women's group are meeting after this service. Is Sharon there? Someone say, Sharon, if you want to know more about women's group, talk to Sharon at the back there, resplendent in blue and a mask. Okay? Um, and they're meeting both in person and online by Zoom. So if you want to know more, talk to Sharon. Or just turn up. Um, they'll be in the Christchurch room, um, socially distanced at 2 o'clock. Holy Communion at 6.30 tonight. We'll end by 7.30. So Robert can get home and watch the football. Okay. Um, this week we're aiming to be open from 10 to 2, Monday to Friday, and 10 to 12.30 on Saturday. Evening prayer will be live streamed this week. Um, and it'll be at 6 p.m. You can either pray where you are um, or join us on live stream. Not a problem. Thank you very much. My lovely assistant there. Good, good. Um, yes, it's right. Take about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, on Tuesday, we'll have two large, well, two small cabins arriving in the car park. They'll be um, taking up two parking places by the tower wall. Uh, these are COVID testing. Uh, the company have already got cabins at Southwark Cathedral and St. Luke's Chelsea, and they wanted a Stratford location. Um, they'll be operating seven days a week, so they will be around on Sunday. Now, needless to say, they are paying us a very large sum of money per week, okay? Which will help to plug the gap in the church's budget for this year. So, to so be nice to them. It's a chance to have Christian witness. They won't have any parking spaces um, for, for users. But uh, do smile at people, greet people, let them know that church members are friendly and nice, okay? Um, they'll probably be here at Christmas, so um, the staff will become good friends by then, I guess. Um, okay, and Tuesday top of tonight, uh, on Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, Ephesians chapter 5, do join us on Facebook. Prayer walk on Wednesday, Iris is leading a prayer walk to that sort of area, um, firing for broad. If you want to know more about prayer walks, give Iris a, 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 a nudge afterwards, okay? Thursday Holy Communion is as normal. Um, next Sunday service is at 10, 12, 18, 30. And we hope that next Sunday will be our last Sunday of split morning service. Um, because on the 25th, we go back to one 11 o'clock service. Now we very much hope that the 11 o'clock service will be outside from the 25th of July until the 5th of September. And we're going to need lots and lots of volunteers to carry stuff around and to welcome and to make it all happen. So, um, Robert and I will be waving a, a, a clipboard run afterwards looking for volunteers for the 25th and the 1st of August. Okay, if you can help, please. Um, it's quite an undertaking, it's great fun, it's the most fun thing we do all year, but it does need lots of people to make it happen. So, next Sunday, 10, 12, 18, 30, and then after that it'll be 11 o'clock and 6.30. TFM Walkaway Mission, um, the West team has got to Newcastle Emlyn, and if you don't know where Newcastle Emlyn is, don't worry, okay, no one else does either. Um, and the East team has got to Brandon um, in Suffolk. So um, I think that's it on the notices. Please pray for the TFM lot. I have got birthdays and then we'll do bands. The number of birthday cards this week actually. Um, Ava Quirico is four. Happy birthday, Ava. Hang up, there's your birthday card. No, it's not. There's your birthday card. Um, uh, who else have we got? We've got um, Silas Lynn. Who is here? Silas. Happy birthday. Silas is nine on Friday. Silas, happy birthday. Great. Congratulations. Okay. I've got a birthday card for Derek Asuoa, who is 18 on Saturday. Leon Gopoko, who is 11 um, on, uh, on, on, on Saturday. Are you here, Leon? 
Yes, you are. Happy birthday, Leo. Come and get your car, dear. Your legs are younger than mine. You can smile at the camera at the same time, then. There you are. Well done. Uh, and Jay Ann Facey is 11 um, on Thursday. Jay Ann had her car at 10 o'clock. Round of applause, at least. Richard Aubrey is an indeterminate age tomorrow. Richard, happy birthday. George Amanqua's birthday is on Friday. Happy birthday, George. Derek Howe's birthday is Wednesday. And Glanville McNeil's birthday is on Thursday. He might be around tonight, so we'll get him then. Happy birthday to you all. Um, now let's do the bands before I forget. Um, and it's great to have um, all these people getting married, not here but elsewhere, but we're privileged to call their bands. So I published the bands of marriage between Paul Allen Coates of this parish and Juliet Alice Jeffries of also, also of this parish. Um, published the bands of marriage between Thomas Hervey Corst um, Jens of this parish and Melissa, Melissa Harriet Culver of this parish. Also between Aaron Kester Minka Born Dick and Rafina Laurel Grace Yard, both of this parish. Also between Christopher Matthews of this parish and Pooja Datani of this parish. Um, this is for the second time of asking in all cases. If you know any reason why these persons should not marry each other, please declare it now. Thank you. We're now going to sing our final hymn, and our final hymn is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. And we might manage four part harmony on this one. So um, let's go for it, guys. into the world around you. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon us and remain with us now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve all in the name of Christ. Amen. Let's just say that our final voluntary won't be as advertised.